Hey everybody, I'm Steve, also known as Mr. Movie. And I'm Jay. And welcome to another episode of the Mr. Movie Dr. Crave Entertainment Network Movie Show. And today we are going we are taking a, we are going back to high school. Cause high school never ends, as it's said by Bowling for Soup. So Jay, tell me, what are your thoughts on some high school movies that you grew up on? Uh, I guess I don't know. I didn't watch too too many. I, I feel like I've seen some of like you know the big big popular I think like the Mean Girls. Yeah. Um, I saw that growing up. Uh, uh, was was, was Legally Blonde a high school music? I mean, that was a college film. College. Was college. Was college. Okay. Um, I like. I remember like I did. I watched Seventeen again with Zac Efron. Okay, yeah. Um, and, like, I've seen, you know, it was kind of, I've watched Clueless. Have you seen that one? That's a high school film. Clueless. It's got Alicia Silverstone. No, I don't think I've seen Clue. Clue, Clue yeah, well, Clue with, with, uh, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, uh, with uh, Tim Curry. Yeah. Um, I love, I love but Tim Clueless Curry. was a pretty, I mean, they, it was sort of, and, you know, there was something about a lot of these, like, teen films that were based on plays that were teenified. I mean, 10 Things I Hate About You was Taming of the Shrew. And She's All That was Pygmalion. But okay. high school. But, you know, what I'm looking at when we're... But, you know, what I'm looking at with this new show, with this episode we're going to talk about, is just right. as a high school film as itself and not really look comparing it to a teen film you know to compare it more talking about it as a teen film versus as a um movie that represented that was just well it's taming the shrew but with teenagers it's pig million but with teenagers you know i'm i'm looking at it more as like kind of kind of that and it was and and we kind of talked about uh, in my notes i kind of wrote you know there's something about there's no cell phones or the closest thing to a cell phone is a flip phone. You know, they're not right. technologically they're it's not as technologically as advanced as I thought it was gonna be, you know. But you know, but you know, but I lo- but you know, and you know, so tell me, did you like all the cause you know, I watched, you know, Clueless, you know, Mean Girls really kinda came at a good point when I was in high school. And I also watched movies such as Easy A which was another high school film as okay, well. Yeah, I guess when I was growing up, I, I hadn't seen many of those. I, you know, I've seen some other ones you know, more recently, but I guess when I was growing up, I guess I sort of avoided this genre. Well, yeah, I mean, I can understand that. I, I kind of like, and, you know, I think, you know, with, and, you know, the, one of the reasons why I like, but what I think would made, what we're gonna what we're gonna cover now is what I think made Ten Things I Hate About You so well is that the cast was so good and you felt like they had a great relationship working on that set. You know, I watched the tenth anniversary DVD special and they do like they pay homage to Heath because he passed away. You know, in two thousand eight and you know that was nine years after he filmed this movie. And you know, and but like. It was so, you know, you could really tell. And I was, I watched a variety, had a video log on YouTube where he, where uh, Joseph Gordon Levins went through his career, kind of like, kind of his movies that he did. And he went to 10 Things I Hate About You. And he said, you know, the thing about 10 Things I Hate About You is I had such a good time with this movie, doing this movie. Everybody was great. The cast kind of, we, they bonded. They became family. And I told people when I was, you know, because when I told people I was working on a 10 Things I Hate About You review, girls would come up to me and go, oh, my God, I love that movie. And I think part of it is because Heath Ledger was a heartthrob. But I also kind of think they had, you, they, it was, you know, the care, you know, had the actors, had they not have picked these actors, it could have gone south pretty bad. Like it could have been right. really hokey. I mean, I I made you watch it. What you? What were your first? Yeah, impressions? I, I Just your first it. impressions. Uh, maybe a couple months ago. Um, 
I guess, you know, I'm a little bit adverse to this, but I actually enjoyed the movie. Like, oh. I, yeah, it was, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't hokey. That's the thing that I liked, I liked about it. Yeah. Was, it wasn't hokey. And it wasn't... And I, I think you're right. The characters were pretty good, and like you know, Heath Ledger was pretty, pretty, pretty charming, good. and you could yeah. tell that he, you know, and he, I was charmed. You were, I know. I mean, yeah. and and Julia Stiles, who did so, you know, I mean, I think they all did such a great job. And you know, one thing is, is that I was doing research on this movie when I was writing the notes, and you know, let's kind of before we start, let's kind of go into the characters, you know, the actors, give them their due. So the first actor was of course Julia so in Julia Stiles, who was in films such as what was your first take on the film the first time you or like you know the now that you've seen it again, let's kind of it's our review. Yeah. You know, had some really charming moments. Um, and I also liked, I guess there was some, like some sort of like somewhat surreal moments that I actually, I think I enjoyed as well. Um, but yeah, I liked it. What was your, like, I guess first? I, I liked it. I kind of felt like this film was sort of, for me, I liked how it was just, it has this, this charm to it. The, um... One thing that I've noticed is is that the film sort of really kind of you know let's kind of it 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 really has this sort of you know there the characters are so good in this film that you know if you didn't have this cast it could have gone so much more like phony they could have really, really just phoned it in and made it into something that was just... They could have done something phony and oh. really make it Hold on. sort of, kind of... Oh, God, this movie was so tedious. You know, the characters were... But what really makes it work is they just had such good chemistry with each character. And they felt like real teenagers, or at least what I thought teenagers were like in the 90s, late 90s. You know, um, but like, you know, I look at, but you know, so the film kind of, so we kind of, so our first introduction is where it kind of introduced kind of to sort of when the film star opens up, we're kind of, kind of introduced to each kind of characteristic or each character we see, um, Cat uh, first, who is driving her uh, convertible car. I think it's convertible. Um, or no, the two girl, other girls that are in the car are listening to One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies, which dates it to being in a 90s film, late 90s film. And they're listening to it and they're like having fun and like bobbing their heads and shit like that. And then she pulls up next to him and blasts reputation. You know, I don't give a damn about my reputation. Do, 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 do. And they look at her like, okay, I really don't want to talk to her. She seems kind of scary. And then when she gets there, and I love this moment. She walks into the, to the school, on the school grounds, and there's this, there's this sign that says, Blast off to the year 2000. 2000 and prom and she pulls it down and what i like about it is she pulls it down right in front of the girl that just hung it up and when she hung the girl that hangs it up goes hey i can't believe you pulled it down you know that sort of like why would you do such a thing like that um and the thing i like about that is that we kind of it is dated it does say it's 19 you know we do know that this film takes place in the 90s so, um, and then we're introduced to Cameron and Cameron, who is sitting in the guidance counselor's office, he's a new kid. He's an army brat. He's been to, I think nine schools in like nine years. And he has, uh, 
he sort of is sitting in the, and he's with a guidance counselor and the guidance counselor is like working on a novel and it's like an, I think it's her sort of ironic not ironic uh, or erotic erotic novel that she's working on and she says you know uh, you know you'll find you'll find Padua which is the name of the school a good school you know like any other school kind of thing and she pulls down and she's then somebody pulls a spitball on the window and she says plus you gotta have shit for brains to uh get into this school kind of thing um she was wacky but she was sort of like I think she really worked as a character that was just there. You know, I mean, not there, but just sort of, she like, she she played with what she had to do. Like, she could have been sort of like, and I think, I, and you got to give credit to Alice and Jenny. I mean, I've seen her. She's she's pretty funny. Uh, I saw her on Moms a couple episodes. She's okay. I think that show's just a little bit written well, but I've seen her in like, she was the, she was in Spy. Did you see Spy? The Melissa McCartney uh, movie? Oh, I did. I loved that one. That was, that was such a good She played the like CIA, head, head of CIA. Oh, okay. okay. And, okay. and it had um, her and Jason Stateman. And she was like the like head of the CIA. And Jason Stateman was like, look, um, how about we, where's the face-off machine? I thought they said there'd be a face-off machine. <laughs> Face-off machine. It's like, she says, look, there's no face-off machine. You can't, it doesn't exist. Well, who told you that? I mean, like, and Jason Stateman was so great in that movie. But she works in this film as I feel like such an excellent, you know, gives, you know, guidance. And so, Mike, and so what I like, what I like about Cameron is he's so, like, in sort of, like, new kid and you can understand what's it like to be in this school and you know and the other thing too is how being a teenager how high school is this little world of yours and i think that's the thing that this film does is it makes this into its own world so michael or cameron goes into so he comes out of the guidance counselor's office and he's met by met by michael Eichmann, who is a video, he works as an AV club guy, but he, uh, but he kind of tries to shrug it off and says, yeah, they would have, you know, get somebody the AV and somebody's like, hey, Michael, wouldn't you help me? He's like, yeah, don't talk to me kind of thing. And then he goes through the cliches. And one thing I like about this, and you see this in films such as Mean Girls, you still there? Uh, mean Girls where um you know she talks about in mean girls you've got the cliche you've got the cafeteria and in mean girls she says you know you've got your jocks kids you know girls that eat their feeling the clicks and all like and and in this one he kind of says there are the beautiful people you don't say hi to them they don't say hi to you and he says and he says watch and she says, he says, how's it going? And, she, and one of the one of the popular kids says, bite me. And then there's, um, hold on, let me look at my notes real quick. Because I wrote a bunch of them down. And, um, and, you know, and he comes in and he says, you know, and then Michael kind of stops him and says, don't even think about it. This girl is a pretty, uh, is stuck up, conceited princess who whose daddy buys her everything you know and that's the other thing about this film is that all the cliches are really you know not what they seem when you watch this film you know um like what were your thoughts on the cliches do you think they worked sort of find out they don't really, you know, they sort of 
they aren't what they are kind of thing, I, you know. And I think it, but I, I think it works. And then, you know, and like you see Bianca, and she's like, and Bianca's with Chastity, who's played by Gabrielle Union, and Gabrielle Union and Chastity sort of, and you can see that she has her friend. And later on in the movie, we'll get to, is that she basically says that you know uh their relationship will come to a head but you know let's kind of continue where we're going and th- um and then after he kind of gives them to the kind of the cliches um, yeah i mean yeah i think his you know he's not thinking about himself he's thinking about you know wanting to probably just get laid but he's a part-time model who's done mostly regional stuff um you know and she's like she's sitting there and she's like trying to figure out you know some word to say and she says um point x you know uh point status or something and she's like and then cat rebuttals and says a specific word and she says splendid and she says, "I heard you were terrorizing Mr. Morgan's in Mr. Mo- you're terrorizing Mr. Morgan's class." And she, she says, "Voicing my opinion doesn't count for father or something." Um, and she says, "You know, cats hole in it." And he says, "Well, we what we need is you know how do we get him to take out cat?" And he, um, Michael says, "What we need is a backer." Someone who's dumb with money. So they go to Joey Lawrence, no Joey Lawrence, uh, Joey Dahmer, and he's in the cafeteria. And apparently, you know he's like int- more interested in sex than anything, because he draws on the cafeteria tray a woman's breasts. He's kind of sleazy. I mean, I think if you look at, if you want to put an antagonist to the film, he is the antagonist. Oh, definitely, yeah. You know. Um, So, uh, hold on, let me get back to my notes. Cat turns him down the first couple times. Yeah, yeah, and like I, and he, um, you know, I feel like, yeah, and like he kind of, and like I think he does it in, um, you know, straights where he sort of does it, where, uh, you know, where he I think. Well, I don't think it's Patrick. I think Patrick. I think, I think what happens is. Um, she gives, or Patrick kind of asks, Cam, it's, she's not, Cameron, Patrick isn't falling for, or Patrick's not falling for Cameron. Um, I mean, uh, uh, Julia Stiles' character is not falling for Patrick. And so he has to go, He so uh, Cameron has to go through in, enemy lines and gets the help of her sister to go through uh, video, you know, her stuff. Yeah, so that's sort of like another, you know, another layer to their deception, where like, like they have to give like Patrick sort of like this secret information to, on like whether uh, cats like likes or dislikes. Right, and she, and he said, and I and I love where they go to, and um, hold on, let me go back to my notes real quick. He says, I can't be seen at Club Skunk. And she says, and uh, I think uh, Michael says, you know, take your reputation and put it on the line just for one night and go see her. It's her favorite band. And it's, there's a, um, so... Yeah, uh, he's, he kind of asked her. Yeah, he changes his mind. 
when he um, um, when he changes he changes his mind and says you know I've written pause it real quick here's the poem I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair I hate the way you drive my car I hate it when you stare I hate your big dumb combat boots and the way you read my mind I hate you so much it makes me sick even makes me rhyme I hate the way you always you're always right I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh. Even worse, when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. But mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. So I like how um, that was sort of uh, done. Yeah. Um, like, I kind of like how... You know, she go. She's, she, and this is where she's changed, and she ends up getting into tears at the end of the poem, re, the poetry reading. Do you remember that? Uh, you don't want me. So Jay, now that we've gone through the film, what are your final verdicts? What did you think about it after, after you watched it? I like how it sort of it like rolls sort of the characters evolve. You know, Cat really is the one that kind of evolves throughout the um, film. She becomes sort of the um, she goes from being basically a bitch to a likable character, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, I, I and I like, but I think what makes this film really good is that all the, the I think the actors work really great against the extra, and they, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt said, you know, making this film, they had so much fun doing it, and I feel like. I feel like it worked really well. And on my scale, I have a scale that I've created. So, um, according to my scale, I put, and I think that it worked. I mean, did you feel, did you, I feel like it was a good, it kind of, it was, it, it, it kind of, and I think now looking at it, is it does feel like, you know, people are going to watch this and remember Heath Ledger. Yeah. You know, um, and I think that Heath would have, you know, and I think, you know, it was so, and it looked like they had so much fun working on it. And I feel like it's, you know, I talked to people, and I probably already mentioned this, but, you know, I talked to people while I was doing this thing, and they said, oh, I love 10 Things I Hate About You. So there's, you know, there's there's kids that probably, you know, you know, I would like to get their perspective of somebody who watched it as a teenager, you know, being in high school at the same time. You know, we look at it as being 11, being nine when it came out. So it wasn't, it was sort of like, oh, this, you know, this was high school, what we thought. But the cast is good. I feel like the, it doesn't feel like overly. Like it, it's written well, the dialogue's written well. You know, I mean, I feel like it worked. I mean, it. I like this film. I, I thought, I thought it did. I thought it did. I thought it was. You know, I think. I mean, yeah, I think the flaw there, there are. I mean, it's not perfect. Right. You know, I feel like there were some flaws with. You know, I feel like the secondary characters were just a little bit just there at times. And I feel like, but I, I like this film. Oh, yeah, it was, it was enjoyable. And it's a Disney film. Really? Yeah, well, it's Touchstone, which is a Disney subsidy. Okay, I didn't know that. All righty. Well, 
uh, I guess, should we wrap this up? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's been a yeah, good in-depth look at 10 things I hate about you. So thank you, and have a good rest of your day. Our next video and please will subscribe. be on Bye. She's All That. So thank okay. you, and please subscribe down below and give us a good review. Bye.